Hello, and welcome to another episode of Wheel of Horror, the podcast where two best friends spin a wheel once a week, it chooses the horror film, and they discuss it. Today we're talking about 2010's Hatchet 2, which was directed by Adam Green. I'm your co-host, Alec. I'm Eric. There he is. Yeah, it is the guy. It is the guy. Yeah, so we were supposed to have Matt Vanover on. Um, unfortunately, he's doing very well with his job, so something came up, and, uh, you know, it's not his fault. So we're going to move on without Matt, which is fine, because, you know, we, we did the first Hatchet movie, just you and I, you know, a while ago, and mm-hmm. it's good to keep the, you know, it, it, it'd be better if we could just do the whole series and probably just you and I, like, kind of just crank it through it. But Yeah, as we go back to things. But Matt, congrats on the new showroom, and uh, you're a busy bee. Biz, biz. Yeah, look up Bard's Clothing if you're looking for personalized clothes made in America, and uh, it's really great stuff, so check it out. You know, I also wanted to say right up at the top, you know, I listened to our Hatchet 1 episode, and I was very critical, like, so I kind of, like, feel bad about how much I was shitting on it, and after seeing this one, like, this wasn't a good movie, but, like, I, I didn't hate it. I don't know. I didn't hate this one. Yeah, you get it. You get it. You're like, oh, this is what this movie is. This is it's like a fun ride. I actually I actually like this one a lot more than the first one. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know exactly why we did this movie though. Now, fucking Daniel Harris. Don't even start. Don't even start. You know it. You know it. And I, I said the her. same thing last time. I was like, you only like this movie because of Kane Hodder, and it's like you only like this movie because of Daniel Harris <laughs> and Kane Hodder. There you go. Yeah. 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 So, anyways, I gotta say, like, this movie takes place the second the first one ended, which, when we saw the first one, I was like, that ending sucked, and now, I don't mind that ending as much, you know? It's nice that it, yeah, it just picks up literally right where that one ended, like a John Wick, almost, you know? Except the character's totally different, and now it's Daniel Harris instead of the other person. Yeah, so, let's talk about that. So, there was a woman, I think her name was Tamara Feldman, or Felding, and she was the original character that Daniel Harris is now playing. And, dude, I couldn't find anything online about what happened. I just, you know, I looked it up, and apparently the director basically said, yeah, it just wasn't going to work. And I think that Tamara Feldman was in uh, Frozen, the movie that he directed between Hatchet 1 and 2, and I think they had a falling out on set, so he replaced her. The Ski Lift movie? That's also on the wheel. So oh, maybe, great. Maybe, maybe we'll pick up on some, like, <laughs> bad looks on set. Yeah, okay. Well, that, that, yeah, that could be it. So, yeah, so they did replace the lead actress with, uh, yeah, with Daniel Harris. But here's the thing. I thought that the guy from Avatar was the lead in the first one, right? Um, no, I don't think so. It was is always it? this girl? It was always Tamara? Or whatever Daniel Harris's character's name is? It was always her? Yeah. Really? Because yeah. she remembers, well, it didn't, like, it started with Robert Englund and them on the boat and they getting killed, and then her going looking for her family, remember? Right. So it was yeah. her. It was her that was, like, the main character. I thought it was, like, the dudes that were there for Mardi Gras, because it's like, my girlfriend left me, like, you know, let's just go to Mardi Gras. I thought he was the lead, but... Kinda, kind of, like, definitely the, the B lead, though. I think she was, like, the main character, because she's, she's the one looking for her parents. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. No, no, I mean, you're right, because, I mean, she is the lead in this one, so... Yeah, Robert England was her father, who got killed in the beginning of the first one. And basically, uh, yeah, Tamara, or whatever, I'm gonna look at her name. Daniel Harris in this movie, who is named Mary Beth. So Mary Beth uh, ends up going into some cabin, and she finds a guy who's in the first one. Um, you know, he's that guy that you thought was funny, who's always just like, yeah, yeah, he's yelling and drinking his own piss and stuff like that. Remember that from the first one? Oh, yeah. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> Dude, so that's the thing. Like, when I was sitting there, I forgot about all this stuff, but he's, you know, this weird, creepy guy with one eye is in his cabin taking care of Mary Beth, and he gives her a bottle, and he's like, hey, this is fresh and hot or whatever. And it was piss. Yeah, yeah. I noticed <laughs> that. Wasn't it in a urinal, too? It was in, like, one of those medical urinal Yeah, it's things. a urinal, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, he's, he's, he's a big piss drinker, that guy. That's so weird, though, because, like, if you didn't remember that from the first one, they didn't really, like, carry that over too well. Well, you think it's just a drinking vessel. It's like, oh, he doesn't have any other cups. So he's, that, that's the only thing you would think. Yeah, exactly. But we, knowing from the first one, we're like, no, no he that's drinks piss. piss. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. But anyway, so this whole scene kind of unfolds where uh, Mary Beth tells this old guy, like, oh, yeah, like, my dad was, you know, Robert England and blah, blah, blah. And then the dude freaks out and he's like, get out of my house. I'll kill you, blah, blah, blah. And we don't know what's going on. And she doesn't know what's going on. But basically, this guy says, you need to go find Reverend Zombie and get out of here because, like, he'll kill me for you being here. So she leaves. 
And then, yeah, the dude's sitting in there in his house just like, hey, I didn't do anything. He 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 knows that it wasn't my fault. Victor Crowley breaks in. Dude, walk us through this kill. This kill was crazy. I, I don't even remember it. What you was don't? It? He, like, punched, he punched through him or something? No. Or, like... He rips out his intestines, yeah. throws him across the room, drags him back by his intestines, and then, and then pops his head off. And his head cuts off. Yeah, his head is, this lands on the table. Like, he's still yeah. blinking. No, that was later. That was later. Oh, right, 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 yeah. Yeah, but he does. He uses this guy's intestines <laughs> to pull his own head off with the intestines. That's not how intestines work. No, 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 no. So, anyways, I was like, okay, you know, the gloves are off. It's Hatchet 2. That's what happened. My brain was like, this is so dumb that my brain is like, you're not going to remember this. Delete it from your memory. <laughs> Deleted like that. But, yeah, so, anyways, that's what kicks off the movie. So, we're like, okay. Mary Beth goes back to uh, to Tony Todd's character, which I loved him in this, dude. I yeah. thought he was kind of a throwaway character in the first one, but nah. This one, he's like one of the leads, and he did a great job. He made this movie way more tolerable. You know you know what this movie really reminds me of? And tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> reminds me of Alien to Aliens. Yep, yeah, exactly. Were you thinking the same the thing? Were you going to say this? Oh, my God. That's yep. exactly like get a whole bunch of badass guys together to go fight these aliens. Like, that's... That's yeah. the idea of this. Dude, the second they got on the boat, the river boat, I was like, this is like aliens. There's that, but there's also, like, there's an alter, you know, the other motive. Right. They're, exactly, yeah. So, exactly, like, the guy the and the aliens. Well, that's the thing that I thought was interesting, too, is, like, you know, uh, Mary Beth is essentially the Sigourney Weaver. Like, she's the one that was a survivor. She's the only survivor, and she's there to basically t- warn them about what's going to happen. So, yeah, very much like Aliens, dude. Definitely got that vibe. Surprisingly, James Cameron hasn't, like, caught after this film. He's probably like, mm, you know what? I did Piranha 2. I'm, I'm not letting this slide. Like, this is this is coming full circle now. Like, I am. Or what did he do? Did he do Piranha? What was it? Yeah, he did Piranha 2. Yeah, so he's probably like, no, not going to let this slide. This is the same premise. Yeah, I mean, hey, whatever. But, I mean, this movie only made $156,000, so I don't think James Cameron's like... You gotta give at least $80 to James Cameron of that. Oh, my God. Yeah, so, I mean, the plot's, like, it's it's fine. It's basically, you know, Mary Beth is like, I want to go back and get my dad's remains, and I need help. And Tony Todd knows that... Which I thought was really cool because they, they talked about this in the first one, but there were three boys who burned down Victor Crowley's house and his dad ended up accidentally killing him trying to get him out of the fire. And they don't really talk about that for the rest of the movie. We end up finding out that Robert England and Mary Beth's uncle and this one other guy were those three boys. So Tony Todd thinks if all three of them are killed by Victor Crowley, the curse will end, which, you know, sure. Well, we'll, we'll talk about the surprise ending in a bit, which is like, what? Remember? Um, Do you want to go into that now with the uncle? It's like, that's not my uncle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, so basically, Tony Tony Todd basically says, we need, uh, why don't you bring your uncle with you or whatever? And she's like, okay, like, sure. So she goes and gets her uncle Bob, which, dude, do you, do you know who that guy is? No, no. Okay, I didn't even know he's ever acted before, but that's um, Tom Holland. That's the director of Fright Night and Child's Play. <laughs> what? That's That's so random i know i was like tom holland's in this and i was looking it up i'm like i know it's not the spider-man tom holland but i was like maybe there's another actor named tom holland then i see him and i was like it's not this was the spider-man even born yet no we came out probably not but but i was just like whoa i didn't know tom holland acted ever so it was kind of like a david cronenberg and jason x kind of thing like he's a big horror director who just had a little i mean he had more than a cameo in this he was a pretty substantial character but yeah he did good too I, I, i think he was all right he was fine yeah i think he should stick to writing and directing but you know hey i love him i really do like i mean those are two of my favorite horror movies as a uh, fright night and, and child's play so it's really I, I love him i think he's great for sure for sure yeah so he's quote unquote uncle bob but not really yeah so basically they go back um to reverend zombie's house and reverend zombie's like all right we're gonna get like a shit ton of people that are gonna come help us kill uh, victor crowley in the swamp corn fed rednecks that's what we're gonna get it's kind of funny, though. One of the guys is Lloyd Kaufman, who is the uh, the creator of Troma. So that, like, that whole Troma thing, you know, like what James Boyland works at and what the guy that's yeah. on the podcast. Yeah, so the creator of that is named Lloyd Kaufman, and he was one of the guys. He's one of the, the hunters. And I was like... I love it. I love it. Why is he in this? It was so weird. What a motley crew. Yeah, and then he, like, gets up and leaves or whatever. But, yeah, this movie had a lot of just odd cameos, uh, horror icons. Like, they did a good job. They really did. But yeah, 
I don't know. It still felt extremely indie, though. Like, like PowerPoint graphics kind of thing. Like, seems like some of the angles were just shot very amateur-wise. So it looked like sometimes the color correcting wasn't even really done for certain things. Yeah, especially, especially towards the end, there was, like, some issues with the end that I saw. Yeah, so this is, like, pretty indie, you know? And I can't find the budget anywhere, but it didn't make a lot of money, so... I think that's more of a cult, a cult following. And that's why they kept making these sequels, because they had an audience and a following. Yeah, yeah, but the reviews aren't very good. It didn't make a lot of money, so it's just kind of odd. But anyways, I, I genuinely did like this more than the first one, though. Like, absolutely. And there's a, there's a third one, too. That we there's haven't... a fourth one. There's, there's, there's Hatchet 1, 2, and 3, and then there's Victor Crowley, which is uh, like the fourth yes. one. Yeah, so that one came out in 2017, but... Apparently, this one is considered the best. Like, this is the fan favorite by everybody, and I, I agree so far. I like this better than the first one, for sure. Would you be interested in watching the third one? I mean, sure, but I Not know, now. Later. I'd rather finish, like, Phantasm, to be honest with you. Like, oh, there's a lot left of that, too. Three. There's only three left. So, okay. I'd rather I'd rather do that or maybe Jeepers Creepers or something, but, but you know, this one's fine, and... Hey man, we're, we're we're covering the spread right now. We're doing all the series. We're we're getting through all the sequels. This is cool. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I I didn't mind this one. I really didn't. I mean, Tony Todd definitely stole the show for me. Like he, I love him in everything, and I was disappointed how little he was utilized in the first one. So to have him be this like pseudo villain, but also like kind of cool the whole time. I don't know. I liked him. Yeah, and his intention wasn't bad. He was like, I want to end the curse so I can essentially do boat tours again without anyone getting killed. Yeah. So I think that was like his motive was to like get his boat tour business back and get rid of Victor Crowley. And the way of doing that, like you said, like make sure the three trick or treaters that caused the fire that uh, inevitably caused Victor Crowley to get killed, make sure those people are dead and then he can rest in peace. That's the idea. It's like, but do you know that? Yeah. You know, it's like, you're just guessing like that's going to stop him. Um, right. Yeah. And then, and then, so yeah, we, we get there. She, you know, do you want to keep going through the plot no, now? Or, yeah. No, I mean, like, it, it really is just like they get they get out there, you know, and then immediately the action starts and people start dying and people go off on their own. And it's kind of like the typical horror, you know, wave things. And then, you know, uh, like Ripley gets, gets that other guy in Aliens. Daniel Harris does that to Tony Tauri's where she's like, you brought us out here for this reason and not really to get my family's body that isn't even here anymore. And he's like, uh, yeah. And then she kind of like zings him with, well, that's not really my uncle Bob, which is like, I thought that was so out of left field. Tell me I'm wrong. That was just like the worst twist I think I can think of like in a while. Yeah. I mean, for her to just be like, he's just like a guy that was my dad's friend who I call uncle Bob, but their relationship when they're alone does not imply that at all she's like your father expects me to take care of you you're my responsibility now which also not really she's like 30 but still i don't know yeah that that was not great that was that was a that was a reach and like very uh not poor writing but very like kind of lazy i think yeah no yeah. and like you could have picked something else like actually my dad did that but like she's like my dad just died of cancer and i'm like what or like or my uncle my actual uncle died of cancer this is just a family friend like that's the that's the where we're going yeah that was lame that was definitely lame yeah but anyway it would have been more interesting if they maybe even said that when it was just daniel harris and tom holland like in the house or whatever she's all covered in shit if they had that conversation then so the audience knows but tony todd doesn't know that might have been more interesting I, i i don't know that or maybe they go into like I haven't seen my uncle in blah 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 years he abandoned my family so maybe the uncle's still out there still Right. And, yeah. Yeah. That would have been and better. That could lead into the third one. It's like, ooh, who is the real Uncle Bob? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> anyways, that was definitely lazy. Um, another thing I just didn't like was like they introduce all the characters, like the rednecks and that couple that like is like getting divorced or they broke up and like she's trying to get him back. It was kind of weird, but that was the couple that had sex in the woods. And then, dude, that was so dumb. Like. I just didn't understand. Like, they know that there's a murder out there, and they're like, let's just fuck in the woods right now. Like, it's just, it was so dumb. I don't it's know. pretty graphic, and then, yeah. But then also, who the hell was that one guy that was, like, 
silent the whole time. I thought he was going to be a bad guy, and they just set him up like, oh, this guy doesn't talk, and he's, like, you know, really badass and stuff. And then he just gets killed, and there's no explanation. Yeah, maybe they, they had to change something last minute when, during filming. It that felt was weird, like, though. It, it, yeah, it definitely was weird, and I, I got that. Excited. Like, they just killed they, – they built up this character, and just that's it? I don't know. Yeah, it was so – like, you genuinely thinking, like, okay, maybe this is, like, Victor Crowley's keeper or something who's, like, out keeping a watch. Like, there was – it felt like there was way more going on with this guy. There was something up with him. Exactly. Yeah, and then they just completely – they're like, nah, he's dead now. Fuck it. And then you had that one guy – who's like the chicken and biscuits guy or whatever. <laughs> and he was pretty annoying, but I did look up his career. He's done quite a bit. So I was like, he's a big time comedic actor. He's been like a lot of key and peel and stuff like that. So, you know, he's, he had a pretty good career after this, but I thought he was pretty annoying in this, you know, but yeah. the one scene that I liked was when he was coming on to Mary Beth and then she was like, get away from me or whatever. And he goes over to Tony Todd. He's like, bitches never fucking want to put out like whatever. And Tony Todd just looks at him like, I hate you. And I was like, ooh, I like this about Tony Todd. Like, he's he's there for a reason, you know? And I don't know. I just... He's there for business. Yeah. And I really got that impression from him, his character. I don't know. I really liked it. There was so much more developed with him in this one. So that was 100% the highlight for me. Uh, gotta say, though, Tony, just shave your head, brah. Just shave it. It looked... Yeah, very patchy. So... Yeah. Anyways, but regardless, regardless. It looked like a lollipop that you drop on the ground. Ooh, God. <laughs> If he hears that, he's like, fuck you. Uh, yeah. I, better, I better stop, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, but uh, I don't know. I just, <sighs> there wasn't much going on. I mean, the second half is, yeah, they get to the woods, and then they're just all murdered one by one um, until there's that one guy, the, the third kid, who we don't really get much information about him, but he's an adult now. He's like a big, bald biker guy kind of. And he honestly gave Victor Crowley a run for his money. They had like a fight scene that was like, it was pretty cool. That was actually really cool. Yeah, I know. I that. that was one of my favorite parts, to be honest. It, it felt like Jason X with that guy and Jason when they fought, like, you know, in the suit or whatever. Remember that part in Jason X? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, kind of reminded me of that a little bit. I was like, finally, somebody who can, like, actually stand up to Victor Crowley a little bit. But, yeah, and, then, you know, another thing I liked was that in the first one they talk about this happening, you know, and they show Victor Crowley, like, you know, killing his son and all that stuff. But this one expanded on that by having this like creole woman who was like their caretaker and we find out that there was a curse placed on them because victor crowley's dad was having an affair while his wife was dying of cancer i think so that adds a whole nother layer that like oh she committed he committed adultery and then a curse got placed on his son and the family so i like that that was that was cool too much cancer in this movie a little bit too much cancer <laughs> yeah i guess <laughs> i don't know uh, not as much of a New Orleans feel. This one, I don't even think they said Bayou. They're like, we're going to the swamps. And I was just like, ah. Well, you remember in, like, the first, like, opening scene or so, when the guy finds the tape, and it's all these, like, oh. girls. And, and I was like, that was the worst part of this movie. It was yeah. the cringiest. And, like, some guy was, like, following this girl, and she's like, I'm 14. And I'm like, oh, what are you, now nah, this is, this is scummy. I hated that. That was bad. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was like a porno, basically. It's like, you're my fifth grade teacher. Yeah, it's in the, and it's in the first three minutes. And then obviously there's one other sex scene later on, but it didn't go there anymore. It's like, all right, we're getting past the scumminess. And then we're going. It's yeah. Like, oh. It was just like, oh, that's this dirty. This is dirty. Didn't need that. Not at all. Did not need that. I think it took away from the overall like movie. Another thing that I thought was interesting, but didn't love the execution was the um, Asian boat driver from the first one, he has a twin brother, apparently. Barely, barely utilized, right? I know. I was I was kind of upset about that. I was just like, he should be way more inquisitive about, like, where's my brother? Like, you know, and I'm not helping you until you find my brother, blah, blah, blah. But. Well, there's also in the first one, he didn't he fake, like, a Louisiana accent? And he's like, I don't talk like this. Like, remember, he's doing the yeah. boat tour. It's like, oh, I gotta look out for the swamp. And he's talking like that. And he's Asian, and it's just like, nothing's adding up. And then finally, you're just like... I don't talk like that. It's like, yeah, we know. Like, this is, like, part of the book. But, like, I wish they, like, did that again. Kind of, like, where this guy talks like a, like, from he's, he's from the bayou, too. I don't know. I thought yeah. that was really funny in the first one. It was. It, but, yeah, in this one, they just kind of, like, he's just, he's his twin. And he's more just like, oh, my brother's gone? Okay, I'm sure he's fine. And then, then he goes out there and gets killed. Apparently, in the third one, they're triplets. <laughs> And no then, way. Yeah. I love yeah. it. I love it. Well, I mean, come on. You got to have the same actors coming back. Why not? Y yeah. So anyway, so he comes back in the third one again. I, I have no idea what the plot is of that one. <laughs> and Victor Crowley, is he, he's a quadruplet. 
That I... would be that would be like insane. Like I love it though. If that's the case. I mean, it's kind of like beer fest with landfill and stuff. But yeah, anyways, yeah. yeah. So there's that whole thing. Um, and the way that this movie ends is kind of similar to the first one, but it's like everyone's dead except for Daniel Harris, and she just absolutely goes to town on Victor Crowley's head. His head is just a mushed up cantaloupe by the end. And then, of course, somehow he, his finger moves and starts reaching for the hatchet. And you're like, come on. But then then Daniel Harris comes back with a shotgun and shoots his cantaloupe mushed head. And that's where the movie ends. So yeah, And he has no head left. So it's like, what's it going to be next Next movie? I, I don't know. They set it up in this one where basically it made it seem like every night he comes back totally reformed and is able to just relive the night of his death every night which i okay like I, he's invincible man yeah and they did mention jason in this one they're like oh so he's like a jason Voorhees, like so they, they even acknowledge that you know i mean it kane hotter was jason so <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i know so actually i that's one thing i if i ever meet kane hotter i'm gonna ask him be like did you prefer to play victor crowley or did you prefer to play jason like because the makeup that he has to wear in Jason, probably not that much. He's got a mask on for most of it. But this one, pretty intense makeup job. He's in, like, a suit and headgear for sure. I bet yeah. I bet he likes both for different reasons. I'm sure this was more fun and loose to make. Like, we're just going to do this and have fun. I, mm-hmm. I, get I hope that's the case. I, maybe it's really the opposite of that, where it was a nightmare. Because sometimes low-budget indie films are just like, let's just get through this and whatever. But... I don't know. He came back, so, I mean, he must have liked it. But, yeah, I mean, the, the Friday the 13th movies made millions and millions of dollars. This didn't even break 250000 Yeah, so. he probably likes the Jason movies <laughs> just for that. It's like, um, yeah, I'd rather a Jason movie over a Victor Crowley movie. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know. But, you know, Kane Hodder, love that guy. Like, super cool that he's just totally in on being this, like, lumbering murderer. And, honestly, his acting, even when he was just playing the human Victor Crowley, was pretty good. He did a good job. Yeah, even the first one, too. I really agree with that. Yeah, so, I mean, most of the acting is bad. (laughs) And most of the dialogue is pretty bad. But Daniel Harris did fine, I thought. I don't think she did that much better than the original one, to be honest with you. I I don't know. I mean, I like her more, but... Yeah, I mean, it's a tough script to work with that she was doing. Like, there's the scene when talking to, to the Swamp Book. What's it, to, to, Todd? Tony, Tony Todd, Todd, yeah. Yeah, and there's that whole scene about, like, you know, the curse and this and that. And, like, she had to, like, really, you know, say, like, I need to go back there. Like, that's not an easy script to do, and I think she did a good job. Yeah, and I also just don't understand why she'd want to go back there. It's like, I know you want to get your dad's body or whatever, but, like, how do you even know it's there? How do you know he didn't feed it to alligators or whatever? And, like... Yeah. I don't know. I, I, let me just wait. Because well, get... she saw it. She saw it in the first one. She saw it, her his, her family's roommate. But then it was missing when they went back, right? She's like, in they're not one, here. Yes, but no, she she oh well, she God. goes back to the same spot and it's missing. But I, right. I, think, I guess alligators got it. I don't, they didn't really answer it. I'll tell you this right now. If this situation ever happens to me where I get murdered and you know I'm dead, just leave me. Just leave my body. It's okay. You don't need to come back for me. Just let, let you be like fertilizer? You okay with that? I mean... I'm not going to risk being like, wait, come get my body and make sure I'm buried in a cemetery. Like, I don't care. I mean, if you're dead, throw me in the wood chipper. Who gives a shit? Yeah. So, I mean, the fact that Daniel Harris is like, I'm going to risk my life. I mean, she says, like, I have nothing. I have no family. So I got to go get them. But I'm like, just leave Louisiana. Do you have to go get them? Yeah. And just... risk all these people? Yeah. And that's the thing. Tony Todd, I know you said, like, he's doing it for the right reasons. He's not. He's doing it to make money. Well, that's the, that's the, true, that's the true motive. He's like, he wants his boat tours back. Yeah, and issues. that's the thing. Just like, yeah, I'm sorry, you got to get a new business. Like, that swamp is fucked. Like, and I don't know. Like, there's got to be other swamps you can go to. Um, he's Victor Crowley doesn't come into New Orleans and kill people, so I don't that's know. Like, that's like the equivalent of, like, having a Loch Ness boat tour, but, like, people are keep getting eaten by the Loch Ness monster and being like, God damn it, like, if only this Loch Ness monster was dead and then people could come out to the, and we could do the tour and, like, creep him out, but there's no actual threat. Like, that's the reason why people were going on the tours. They, they love the Victor Crowley story. But it's real, and people die. Yeah, so. it's like, imagine Nessie was real. Like, oh, if you there is a chance you might not come back from the Nessie tour. So yeah. So he goes out and kills Nessie. I mean, that's a good idea. Make that a movie. Yeah, I like that better. But 
<laughs> but I don't know. I just Tony Todd. I'm like, dude, just I don't know, be a voodoo guy or dude, something. Like, yeah, sort of, like I don't know. Open a Popeyes. There's plenty of swamp down there. There's got to be another area to go to. A Popeyes. Yeah, yeah. You know, love that chicken from Popeyes down there. That's for sure. Everyone does. It's from there. Yeah. I know. I it saw his house. Chicken. I went to Popeye's house when I was down there. He has a uh, probably a 40-foot robot in his yard just randomly. I, I remember Kelly and I were driving down there. I was like, what the hell is that thing? He's like, oh, that's Popeye's house. <laughs> no way. No way. I swear to God. That's so funny. I, swear, I was like, why is there like an 80-foot robot in that, in that guy's lawn? Oh, that's just Popeye's. That's Popeye's house. <laughs> he's so silly. Yeah. Yeah, he's silly all right. But, yeah, I mean, again, we said in the first one, but I do like that this takes place in New Orleans. There's not a lot of horror movies that do take place down there. It's a swamp. That's a new kind of setting. So this movie has positives, but overall it's, you know, there's better slasher series out there, I think. But for modern, you know, this came out 13 years ago, and they've still made two more since then. So, like, this is kind of a modern slasher franchise, and, you know, it's it's just, it's mean. That's the thing. Like, I don't... I don't like the like repeated like that. There's that one guy who got his head cut off with like a, like a gardening hoe or something like that, and like Victor Crowley just kept stabbing him and stabbing him and stabbing him and stabbing him, and then his head just like cut in half or whatever. I don't like stuff like that. I don't like the the drawn out just like mean kills. I don't know. Like when your intestines like somehow break through your skin and cut your head off. Yeah, it's just like I get it that you know I'm sure the audience is like whoa like freaking out, but. I don't know. I, I don't like kills, like Terrifier. I don't like stuff like that either, or Saw or Hostile. Like. Well, Terrifier tries to be the goriest kills you can possibly think of. That's what, that, that movie is like, if you want to see people die horrifically, that movie. Well, apparently, I haven't watched it yet, but the, the Terrifier 3 trailer came out a couple days ago, and people are, like, pissed. Like, uh, I didn't watch it. Matt Bann never watched it. He could have talk, talked about it on the episode, but basically, he said it's, like, it's a Christmas, it's a Christmas movie. It's Christmas, yeah. Yeah, and it's, like, a little girl comes downstairs. She's like, Santa? And it's him dressed in, like, a Santa hat. It's, it's art. And he turns around, and then it goes black, and it comes back up, and the entire room is just covered in blood. And people are like, why do you want to see this? What is wrong with our culture today that this is something that's appealing to people? And I'm like... I kind of get it. I kind of get the like why that's not appealing or why it shouldn't be appealing, you know? Killing children? Yeah, that's not Well, appealing. not just killing children, but just like these movies are so cruel and like Hatch is a step, way step down from Terrifier or Saw or anything like that. But mm. I just – I don't like mean kills. Like I'm conditioned to like Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street and Halloween where I don't know. They just – they feel classier. <laughs> I used that last time, but – the, bo- the boogeyman is classier than a clown. Yeah, but we've talked about this before, but I was thinking about it the other day, man. There's that one scene in Halloween, the 2018 remake, where Michael Myers walks into a house, kills the whole family, and there's a baby crying, and he walks up to it, and then he just mm-hmm. walks away. And I'm like, yo, yo, you can't, you can't do that. You either kill the baby, or you don't even bring it in, to, in the first place. Yeah. I didn't hate that scene but i remember when that happened i was like oh dude no don't do that don't don't do that no i didn't want him to do it but i'm like you can't introduce that if you're not going to do it because it hurts his character right but the idea i I like to think of that though is the idea is a baby doesn't know what evil is yet it's innocence so it kind of just keeps the idea of evil going with like he's just pure evil but that's not pure evil that's just because there's nothing evil. I, well, don't, I don't know. Wait, I don't know. Eric, hold on. I'm going to push back. All right, all right, all right. How many how many dogs did he kill? How many? And then yeah. even in 2018. Well, those dogs were mean. Those dogs <laughs> were scared of him, and he killed them. And then um, he also killed that kid in, in the 2018 one who's like, I like dancing or whatever. That kid's not evil. That kid yeah, I mean, th- that scene made me think, but I'm, I'm glad they uh, – I mean, I'm, I really wish they didn't put that in. That's I like just wish it wasn't. That's one of the least yeah. favorite parts of the movie, though. Right. Sure. Because that's the thing. It's like if you're going to introduce a killer who is just pure evil and you know sadistic and all this stuff, I don't, I don't think they can draw the line, you know. And I don't know. But we're talking about a different movie now. But we'll yeah. see what happens if we do. I'm sure we'll do Hatchet Three, but we'll see what happens. Maybe he, you know, leaves the Bayou. What do you think happens in Three? I, I have no idea. I've not read any plot synopsis. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to go back to the Groundhog's Day of of Victor Crowley just being reborn the next day randomly yeah it sounds like that's the, just the idea of it like oh he just every day is a, like, at midnight he just regenerates or something when the moon is full whatever it's gonna be and then i mean there's not much plot left except for daniel harris trying to think of, if daniel harris is even in the third one i think she is she I is i think yeah. she is because i saw it in her bio yeah yeah maybe the uncle maybe there's more to that i don't i don't 
You yeah, know? I think that's it. I think she's going to go find the uncle and be like, what did you do? Like, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. then he'll have to go back with her. Because Tony Todd's dead. I mean, everyone's dead now. So it's just her and, you know, the Asian guys triple Maybe it. looking for the remains. I don't know. I don't know. Too, too much. Too much going on to think of a third one. Yeah, but I don't know. We'll cover it someday. But yeah, let's give it. Let's give it. A, let's give it a few few months, like a season or two. And we'll, maybe in the summer we'll watch it. Yeah. Well, I don't really have much else to say about this one. Do you have any last minute thoughts? No. I mean, did you have a favorite part? Um, I mean, I, I don't. Not really. I just. I just like Tony Todd. His presence the whole time. Yeah. I, was, I just liked his character, and I liked the name. I, I, I liked everything about him, but. I didn't have a scene I really liked that much. No, what about you? I mean, just Daniel Harris at the end, just just mm. turning his face into like a mashed pumpkin. Yeah, that was cool, and that that was like what I wanted out of Halloween Six because you see at the end Paul Rudd like bashes Michael's head in with like a pipe and it turns like green and stuff, but then he like just leaves, and I was like, fuck, I love that she came back with a gun and blew it, you know, blew up his. Like his literally, head. yeah, he doesn't have a head by the end of that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was cool. I did like that, and and that was something because she drops the hatchet and walks away, and I was like, oh god, another friggin' one of these. And then <laughs> and then she goes and gets the gun, and I was like, thank God, finally a smart protagonist in a horror movie. But that's what I felt too. It's like that's what you do at that point, dude. If I was her, yeah, it would. I would like dismember his body, cut his arms off, cut his legs off. Like there would be nothing left of him if if I was Daniel Harris. Yeah, Victor but, Crowley know. sushi. That's that's yeah. all. It would be yeah for sure yeah. for sure all right well guys so um really quick i am actually uh, going to comic-con this weekend and i'm gonna be uh doing a panel there so if, if anybody's going to la comic-con this weekend i'm doing a panel called voiceover actors improvise a season of not the bachelor which is at four o'clock <laughs> on saturday and then on sunday i'm doing uh, another one um let's watch messed up cartoons now, when you say Comic Con, you say is it Los Angeles, San Diego? Which, which it's which... L A Comic Con. So... L A Comic Con. So yeah, yeah, so if anybody's going to that, uh, stop by, say hi. Yeah, mess- message us on Instagram and Alec. You can meet up with people, talk with them about the show. That'd be cool. Yeah, so I'm, I'm excited. It's the first time I've ever been to a Comic Con ever, and um, yeah, we're showcasing the, the cartoons on Clickhead. That's another thing I've been working on. So. Very fortunate that got in there. So, unfortunately, next week we will not have an episode just because I'm, I'm going to be traveling all week. So, um, but yeah, but uh, check it out if you're at Comic Con. Uh, watch our stuff on Clickhead. It's on YouTube. You can, you know, laugh along with us. And um, yeah, otherwise, Eric, you want to spin the old wheel? Yeah, spin the wheel. Uh, yeah, but uh, hopefully Tony Todd's not there and he's like, I didn't like your lollipop comment. Really, like, <laughs> I imagine. hope he's there. I hope yeah. he's there. He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> Nah, love Tony Todd. Come on. It's all oh, yeah. fun. It's all He's fun. the best. He's the best. All right, you ready? Yeah. Spinning. Mm-hmm. Elm Street 5. All right, cool. Interesting. So, yeah, that's Dream Child. So we have Andy Danish coming up for that one. I did check with Joe, and he said, you know what? You guys got this. <laughs> so... I uh, I don't really remember this one that well, but based on Joe's uh, you know text, it doesn't. Sound he had a lot of nice things to say about four. I, I got a feeling it's not going to be that nice for five. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, thank you very much for listening into our episode today on Hatchet Two, and we will. See-